clap to the Lord. Wow. Another year is about to pass and uh, just looking at all these testimonies of uh, different pastors and long-term missionaries serving uh, in the different nations, we are able to see and witness what God is doing in all these nations despite uh, the difficulties and challenges that uh, people are going through around the world. So may kita natin yung grace ni Lord and uh, again, to all of us who have given, who have prayed, who have really supported these uh, missionaries of ours, we want to say thank you on behalf of our pastors and uh, the leadership team. And uh, we look forward to uh, a more fruitful 2023, no? Kasi marami pang uh, nations na eventually by next year, no, we would be able to disciple and we would be able to reach out. And who knows, yung katabi mo, baka ipadalan gad yan sa Iraq. Sabay biglang, o nga, tama. <laughs> di ba, no? So, kano, ano mang nation yan, di ba? Kung ano man na mag-open, then we're gonna believe God that one day, okay, the gospel will be planted in these nations. And probably you're wondering, uh, I, I, by the way, my name is Richard, and I'm one of your pastors here, uh, serving with Pastor James, and of course, our campus missionaries, uh, si Gian, asan si Pao? Ah, nasa likod na. Okay. So, si Gian, one of our campus missionaries, and his wife, uh, Pao, who's at the back. So, we're... Uh, part of our leadership team here in our 5 p.m. And you might be wondering, anong meron dito, Pastor? Parang merong uh, uh, may display dito. Well, kah- kahapon lang actually, we had our leaders and volunteers appreciation. Ayan. So ito po yung mga pictures natin from yesterday. And we want to recognize lang, uh, if you're one of our leaders, Victory Group leaders or volunteer, can I ask you to stand? Okay, pwede po bang tumayo tayo just to recognize you again. Anumang ministry can next serve or as you disciple people. We want to thank all of you who are part of our team in Victory Passing. Palakpang naman natin sila. Yan, all right. So again, to all our leaders and volunteers, we want to thank you. You probably see no, in our 5 p.m. service, hindi pa ganun kadami. And we're encouraging majority of you by next year, okay? You could sign up in any of our ministries. In fact... By next year, we are looking forward to opening our, ano ba tawag dun, Pastor James, the uh, preschool. Ito na yung next target natin. Uh, sino si inyo may heart kang mag-disciple ng next gen? Particularly the younger, the younger generation, no? yung mga 3 to 5 or maybe 6 to 8 or 6 to 9. Meron ka, is that part of your desire? Kung yun ang heart mo, uh, approach us or maybe approach one of our pastors or staff we want to help you out. And uh, again, I'm pretty sure merong gifting si Lord sa bawat isa sa atin na pwedeng gamitin ni Lord. Kung, kung titignan natin, ano, yung mga tumayo kanina, uh, uh, some of our volunteers, ano lang eh, yung kung titignan natin, really their heart, their faithfulness, and being used, yun ang talagang ano nila eh, yun ang talagang uh, desire nila. And that's why, uh, Tama-tama, no, over the last seven, eight months that we've really been holding on-site services. Dumadami ni mga tao. Uh, and uh, we look forward na next year, okay, yung mga bakanting upuan. At the same time, yung mga upuan sa gilid, we would be able to use them because people will be coming over. And of course, you're all part of that. Uh, you have family members maybe or friends na pwede yung imbitahan dito. Now, just a few things that uh, uh, I want to share to you no, before I dive into our new series. Uh, next, two Sundays from now, kung natatandaan nyo nung November, di ba, we had our very first community. Natatandaan nyo ba yun? Where we brought food uh, and then we set up some tables. You know what? The good news is dahil ito yung buwan ng mga party-party, no? Okay, babalik natin yan this coming December 18, okay? So, markahan nyo na sa inyong calendar yan. And uh, in fact, you could bring your family, you could bring your friends here, and uh, we would have uh, our time together here during our 5 p.m. service, okay? Okay ba yun? So we can bring food. And as part of our application from the recent series, uh, yung katatapos na finance series natin, in fact, uh, this is a great opportunity to get to know other people and maybe bless someone. Hindi mo man kilala, okay? Uh, probably God prompted you to buy something or maybe to bless someone with uh, certain food, no? Pwede yung dalin yun on the 18th. And we can bless one another as well. Okay, Bayon? Yeah. All right. Sinong excited for 18? 
Hopefully, mapuno tayo dito. Bring your family members, bring your friends. Uh, I, I met someone, I think Angelo yata yung pangalan. Tama, si Angelo, no? Galing pantrabaho, diretso dito. Diba? Kung merong iba sa inyo, galing trabaho, uh, 24 hours ka ng gising, dagdaga mo na lang ng mga tatlong oras, diba? Bago ka matulog. Todohin mo na, diba? <laughs> then, hope to see you on the 18th community, alright? Uh, Sunday yan sa 9, 1, and 5 p.m. services natin. And of course, since uh, magpapasko na, meron tayong konting adjustments sa schedules natin. In fact, we will hold our Christmas Eve service, okay? You're right. That's a Saturday, uh, 3 p.m., meron po tayong service dito. Okay? Okay ba yun? Uh, probably some of you are already uh, preparing for Noche Buena with your family members and you can invite them. Okay, kung nandito lang naman kayo, nasa Pasig area kayo or uh, medyo malapit lang kayo, sino sa inyo survey lang, quick survey. Uh, mukhang open kang umaten ng December 24, just an, just just a show of hands. Kasi kasi Sabado to eh. Hindi naman to Sunday, di ba? Okay, uh, a few hands and uh, again, kung aaten ka ng 24, you can bring your family. Okay? Especially the ones na maaring busy during regular Sundays, pwede niyo silang dalhin dito and we hope that uh, they can worship with us and they can hear the message as well. And on Sunday, ito naman ang schedule natin, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Kasi yung iba yata sa inyo, gising kayo hanggang 25 ng umaga. So at least makakatulog ka ng konti, just in case lang, uh, attend ka at least 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Yan po ang ating schedule for the 24th and 25th. Alright? So I'm excited to share the word today. We're beginning a brand new series and we're talking about unwrapping the present. Ayan. So, uh, may katabi ka mukhang galing sa party. Kaya medyo na late lang ng konti. Hindi mo na naabutan yung uh, start natin. Ano? Maraming parties itong mga, na, itong mga susunod na mga araw. But uh, we're gonna talk about this for the next four weekends. And uh, really, our heart is to go back to... The very reason why we have Christmas. Ito po yung gusto natin pag-usapan. And uh, we're gonna look at what the Bible says about this one. Ano? Now, uh, you, we probably have our own favorite Christmas story, right? May kanya-kanya tayong mga story. Uh, ako ang young, uh, when I was in grade school, no, um, every time we visit our grandma and grandpa in Binondo area, normally kapag Pasko yan eh, uh, nakapula kami. Meron ba dito, Chinese ka, may Chinese blood ka, mukha kang Chinese, ayan, ayan. No, medyo singkit mata, ganyan. So, yun po yung ginagawa namin, it's part of our culture, it's part of our tradition as a family. We would go to Binondo, we'd visit our grandparents, we wear red, okay? Uh, probably because swerte, hindi ko alam, no? Pero may nakapula dito sa harap, ano? So, advance, no? Advance, Merry Christmas, ha? Ayan, so... So, yun ang ginagawa namin. And then, we normally gather together as uh, yung mga hindi ko namimit normally ng mga cousins ko kasi yung iba sa kanila, malalaki na, mas, ma, mas matanda sa amin. Doon namin nakikita, doon kami nagkikwentuhan. And syempre, hindi mo wala yung angpaw. Okay, yan. Kahit yung iba sa atin, karamihan Pilipino, alam niyo yung angpaw, no? Di ba ngayon, pag sa kalye, baligtad, ikaw ang binibigyan ng bata. <laughs> binibigyan ka, bigyan mo, lagyan mo ng laman, ano? No? So, yun yung mga... Uh, traditions na na encounter ko or na alala ko when I was young. We all have our own stories, and I think uh, when I was looking at the news, ito yung mga masasabi siguro nating non-negotiable kapag ka Pasko sa mga Pilipino, no? Uh, Shempre, dahil party, maraming pagkain, okay? May lechon, di ba? Tignan mo naman yung pagkain niyan, magugutom ka na, di ba? May lechon, may bibingka, may putubungpong. So, sari-saring mga pagkain. And uh, yung iba rito, putok-batok, tawag nga nila, di ba? Siyempre, kung maraming pagkain, kasama na yan sa tradisyon ng Pilipino, yung parties and reunions. Okay? And probably some of you have already scheduled that uh, since November. Ano pa yung ibang mga tradisyon natin? Siyempre, hindi mawawala sa mga nagtatrabaho. Yung bonus, 13 month, di ba? Bahagi na yan ng... Uh, Kultura, keep calm, di ba? Happy 13th month. <laughs> Ayan, yan. Uh, may exchange gift. Ano pa? Siyempre, marami rin mga decors. Sino sa inyo may decors kay sa bahay? September 1 pa lang, naka-up na yung decors mo, naka-up na yung Christmas tree mo. Excited ka na, di ba? So, nagniningning yung mga 
ano natin, Christmas lights. And I think when we surf the internet and uh, when we look at uh, online, marami tayong makikita eh, online regarding Christmas and all that. But how do people observe or what happened in the past? Paano ba yung itsura ng Christmas? Uh, many years back or even in ancient times. You see, if the Christmas, seasons, uh, the Christmas season is one giant gift, okay, laid in front of us, when we try to unwrap it, ano kaya makikita natin? Okay? Kung yung uh, kapaskuhan na isang napakalaking uh, Christmas gift, no, tapos i-unwrap mo siya, buksan mo siya, ano ba makikita natin? Ito yung gusto nating i-discover together in this series. No? So, uh, let me invite you to stand in reverence to God's Word. And we're going to read nine verses uh, beginning uh, in John chapter 1. We're going we're gonna to start in verse 6, okay? Maya maya, dadaanan din natin yung mga preceding chapters. But let me start in verse 6 and then we'll end in verse 14 before I pray. It says here in verse 6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to, hear, to, to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And then in verse 14 it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's all bow our heads. Lord, as we begin this series and talk about um, Christmas, Lord God, and as we travel through time, talk about the perspective of the Scripture, we're asking Holy Spirit, that you will speak to each one of us, that you bring us back to the whole original reason why there is such a season called Christmas. We pray that the very message would be embedded deep in our hearts and it will bring the, trans the transformation that you desire in each one of us. Marami pong salamat. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's all take our seats. You know, very quickly, when you look at the background of uh, John, this was written by the Apostle John. He's one of the 12 apostles of Jesus. And the Gospel of John is one of the four Gospels that we can find in the New Testament. Okay, so, uh, pag binasa natin the New Testament, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, ang tawag sa kanya, o sa kanila, synoptic Gospel, meaning see, uh, kumbaga, ano to? See together, okay? Because the first three Gospels, basically, they present the life of Jesus in a similar pattern, okay? Pero itong sa Gospel ni John, um, ang focus nito is on who Jesus is, okay? Being the Son of God. Now, iba-iba ng angulo yung mga Gospel writers natin, kung titignan natin. And John started the Gospel account by going back to the creation account. Okay? The very first book in the Bible is what we call Genesis. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, ang sabi doon, in the beginning. Okay? Diba? Yun ang, yun ang phrase niya, no? In the beginning, God. Diba? Yun ang sinabi sa verse 1. Okay? Part of that. Now, when you go back to verse 1 of chapter 1 in the book of John or the gospel of John, ito naman ang sabi rito. In the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? Three times, the Word, Word, okay, appeared there. Okay? Tatlong beses, in capital W. Ano ibig sabihin nun? John was basically introducing the Word as Jesus. We go back to verse 14, yung last verse na binasa natin kanina. Sabi ni John dito, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son, with a capital S, from the Father, full of grace and truth. In short, when the creation began, in fact, 
time before before creation began, okay, God the Son, through Jesus Christ, He was already there. He was already part of creation. In fact, hindi siya kailangan i-create kasi nandun na siya. Long before creation even began. Now, the word comes from the ancient Greek word logos, L-O-G-O-S. Marami siyang meaning. One of them is reason or a statement or a word. Now, for the audience of John, when he wrote this gospel, he was basically addressing to two different audiences, the Jews and the Greeks. Okay? And for the Jewish audience, nakaka-relate sila pag ginamit niya yung term na logos. Okay? Because uh, for the Jewish rabbis and teachers, they often refer to God as the Word of God. Okay? In the mind of ancient Jews, ang ibig sab- para sa kanila, no, the phrase Word of God could be used to refer to God Himself. And for the Greeks, or particularly the Gentiles, no, every time they encounter the word logos, para sa kanila, it's the power that makes the world orderly and stable. Now, for John, if he's going to address it to two different types of uh, audiences, the Jews and the Greeks, he was basically trying to tell them, what you've talked about, what you've probably written, or what you have always thought of, I'm going to reveal it to you. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All right? Now, there are three absolute truths that we can find from the verses that we have read. Let me share this to you. No? Three absolute truths about Jesus as the Son of God. Una, Jesus, the Son of God, came to give light to everyone. Jesus, the Son of God, came to give light to everyone. Christmas Part of uh, the Christmas experience is light. Tama? Napakaliwanag niyan. Pumunta ka sa iba't ibang malalaking siyudad dito sa Metro Manila. And probably one of them is Makati. And uh, probably now it's in BGC. Meron ba dito nakatira sa BGC o nag-work ka doon? Di ba? Hindi ka maliligaw doon. Kasi paggabi, ah, bago, pa mag, uh, bago pa mag nightfall, no? talagang maliwanag na siya. Marami ng mga naka, nakabukas na ilaw doon. And... Again, in first point, Jesus, the Son of God, came to give light to everyone. When we look at verse 9, it says, The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came on his own, and his own people did not receive him. By writing that Jesus is the true light, John was telling his readers that Jesus is the light, and he came to fulfill the many prophetic words that refer to him. In fact, the many Old Testament prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, um, sila Haggai, sila Malachi, they all wrote prophetic books that talk about the coming Messiah. And Jesus came to fulfill it. Siya yung naging fulfillment niya, ano? But in a strange way, when you look back at verse 9, sabi rito, he was in the world the world was made through him because he was there during creation, yet the world did not recognize him or did not know him. The world did not recognize him. That's in another translation. And then in verse 11, it says here, he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. Si Jesus, kung baga, kung isa siyang balikbayan, hindi siya tinanggap dun sa bahayan na binalikan niya. Can you imagine if, uh, if you are going back to your province, uh, Pong is here, one of our leaders here, and one of our volunteers. Kankwekwentuhan kami kahapon sa volunteer appreciation natin. Pauwi siya ng Pangasinan. So alam niya na, no? secret natin to mga 5 p.m. Uuwi daw siya ng Pangasinan. Okay? So, uuwi siya ng Pangasinan. Imagine mo, pag uwi niya ng Pangasinan, saan ka nga ba uli, ano, sa, malapit ka sa Dagupan, di ba? Pag landing mo ng terminal ng Dagupan, Tapos, bababa ka ng bus, pong. Hindi ka tatanggapin ng mga pangasinense. Hindi ka taga rito. Umalis ka, bumalik ka. Umalik ka kung saan ka nang galing. <laughs> di ba? Parang ganun yung pakiramdam ni Jesus, no? They did not receive Him. People did not receive Him. Up until this time, okay, some people would reject Him. Okay? People, it, it's possible that we celebrate Christmas, we go through uh, the whole Christmas festivities and still miss out the real reason. Most especially, missing out on Jesus. Pwedeng 
may isang, isang daang kang natanggap na regalo sa Christmas, pero posible ding ma-miss out mo si Jesus. Kaya napakahalagang pag-usapan natin to. So that after Christmas and when the New Year comes, okay, we've experienced Christ more and more. And we've allowed Christ to change us further. Let me explain further. We know that our world today has plunged into a spiritual darkness. We see that all around. Sa balita, sa mga napapanood natin sa balita, sa mga nababasa natin. Uh, what used to be um, a morally acceptable, for example, in marriage, no? Um, when we talk about marriage, it's obviously, uh, kumbaga nag pag-asawa ng isang babae at lalaki. And sometimes, there would be challenges, right? Uh, for married people. Meron rito, happily married ka. And it's, it's a reality that as married people, may mga challenges tayong dinadaanan. Tama ba? May mga trials. And nowadays, because of the prevalence of sin and uh, really maraming mga, kumbaga maraming mga pagsubok na pinagdadaanan, minsan, hindi na nila naipaglalaban. What, what, happens, what, what happens is, when challenges come, when trials would come, people would, married people would try to find an easy way out and look for love somewhere else, okay? Because of sin, because of darkness that's prevailing. Another is integrity and honesty at work and even in business. It's a challenge these days. Uh, my sister, one of my sisters is engaged in a business and she would tell me from time to time that it's hard to do business in Metro Manila. And I, I'm sure, Attorney Inky, di ba, no? Uh, last week lang, may kinikwento ka, parang uh, the challenge of uh, working and doing, transacting business with integrity can be taxing, can be a challenging thing. Would you agree with me? If you're in business, if you're at work, why? Because our world is plunged in darkness, okay? The Bible said God created male and female. But these days, this very absolute truth that the Bible has said since Genesis, since it was written in Genesis, has repeatedly been challenged in our society. Today, the idea, the, the biblical idea, really the biblical identity of male and female has been replaced by sexual preference. Okay, it becomes a right. It becomes something that people would try to push. But what does the Bible say? Now, we go back to Romans 3, and let me make a point here. Romans 3, verse 9 to 12. Paul wrote the real moral state of our world today. Look at this. Not at all, for we have already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, are under the power of sin. Bakit ba may corruption? Morally, bakit may corruption ng mundo ngayon? It's because all of us are under the power of sin. As the scriptures say, no one is righteous. Not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good, does good, not a single one. Do you see the categorical phrase or word? All, no one. Kahit sabihin pa nating mabait yung katabi mo, kung tulog. Sana hindi naman natutulog, di ba? Pero kahit sabihin mo mabait ang katabi mo o mabait ka, hindi ka naman nagkumagmura ka man, isang beses ka lang magmura sa isang araw, kumpara sa katabi mo sampung beses, we still fall short of God's standard. Because the standard of God is perfection. And the perfection and holiness can only be attained when we have Christ in our lives. Okay? It has nothing to do with our good deeds. That's why the Bible says in Romans 3, we are under the power of sin. Lahat tayo. Okay? Walang exempted sa mundo. All of us are prisoners of sin. When you say prisoner, bilanggu tayo ng kasalanan. By our own effort, we will never be able to change ourselves. Have you ever said that to yourself? Magbabago na ako, promise. Grabe yung word ni Pastor James nung nag-preach siya. Talagang natouch ako. Pero pagtapasok ng Monday, di ba, nag-traffic and all that, nagalit ka, napamura ka, kung ano, marami ka nang ginawa, hindi na okay, di ba? Why? 
Kasi kung wala tayong Jesus at hindi tayo nag-depend sa power ng Lord, we will continue to be in the state of sin. That's why the biblical standard set by the Lord is never acceptable in society. Why? Because again, when a person's spirit is unregenerated, hindi pa binabago ng Lord, hindi niya tatanggapin yung change. Okay? No one is seeking God. I remember, many years back, before I became a Christian, um, I, was, I grew up insecure. I, I grew up trying to please uh, my parents, trying to please people in authority. And uh, I remember coming from a Filipino-Chinese family, I tried to be religious in a way. Diba? We would go to temples um, uh, on special occasions, on lunar calendars. We would go to temples, and every time I go out of the temple, I feel good. Diba? Because I feel like, ah, man, religious naman ako. Nag, uh, nag, uh, lagay ako ng insenso. Uh, nag-burn ako nung mga, may tinatawag kaming pera, okay? Yung tinutupi-tupi na ganyan na dilaw. And I feel good about it, but after a while, you know, the, the feeling would wear out because in reality, deep inside, there's something missing, okay? And I was like that growing up, even though I was kind of religious, until my brother shared the gospel to me, and one of, the, one of the messages or one of the verses that he shared to me was this one. In Romans chapter 3, yung binasa natin, all, no one is good, not even one. And then he shared, he, in fact, he shared to me Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And I realized, sabi ko, so what now? Okay? I feel like I'm in deep trouble. Okay? But then it didn't end there when he started talking about what Jesus did. He talked about Christmas and the significance of Jesus coming to earth. And that's where this light started to illuminate my soul. And I realized I simply need to repent and make that decision and say, Jesus, it's not me who's going to be king. It's going to be you alone. John chapter 8, verse 12. Take a look at this. This is what Jesus said. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. My question is, will we follow Jesus, the true light? As he illuminates your spiritual path, will you follow that path that he has prepared for each one of us. Yun ang magandang tanong no, sa atin, mga sarili. No? Will we follow Him? When He say, follow me, will we follow Him completely? Not selectively. Not on this terms, Lord. Because the desire of God is not 99.5% of your life. It's 100%. It's an all or nothing proposal. Okay? When we allow Jesus the true light, to be in our lives when we decide to follow Him, then we will never walk in darkness anymore. Now imagine if this whole main hall is closed. Walang ilaw. Diba? Makakapaglakad ka ba confidently? No, you won't. Diba? Madilim. Imagine pa nag-blackout dito, pati sa mall, you would probably be frozen where you are until the light would come back or until you could light up your phone Okay, and uh, try to find your way out. But that's what Jesus did. Being the true light, He illuminated our path and He brought, He exposed things, okay, in our lives so that we can be changed. Jesus, the Son of God, He came to give light to everyone. Kung dati, kung Krisyano na tayo ngayon at kung dati alipin tayo ng kasalanan, alipin tayo ng galit natin, ng puot natin, in Christ, all these, natanggalin na ni Lord. He will start changing us. He will start transforming us so that we can live, okay, through His guidance, through His illumination. And it begins with a relationship with Jesus. That is the very essence of Christmas. Jesus, the Son of God, He came to give light to everyone. Second absolute truth we can find from John chapter 1. Jesus, the Son of God, he came to give us our true identity 
as children of God. Binigyan niya tayo ng liwanag and now, binigyan niya tayo ng bagong identity as a child of God, as a daughter of God, as a son of God. Look at verse 12. To all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not, nor, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Let me zero in on two words. Receive, believe. Receive, believe. Now, it's true that billions of people all over, all over the world are still you know, living in sin. Kaya nga tayo may missions, kaya tayo nag-reach out sa iba-ibang bansa because the gospel is needed in those nations as well. They need to hear the true gospel as well so that they will be rescued from sin as well. But for those people who have welcomed Jesus, they became children of God. Yan ang sabi ng Bible. Those who receive Him. The word receive is much like welcoming a visitor in your house. Imagine if you are, if you agreed with your family members to have a Christmas party next Saturday at 6 p.m. Tapos dumating yung family member mo, maybe si tito, si tita, dumating sila 5.30. Eh, hindi ka pa naliligo, nagluluto ka pa, may sampu ka pang uh, ulam na niluluto, hindi ka pa tapos, hindi mo pa na-prepare lahat. Ano sasabihin mo kay tito at tita? Pagsilip mong ganun. Tito, tita, hindi pa ako tapos, diyan muna kayo, tambay muna kayo, yosi break lang kayo. <laughs> Masasabihin mo, di ba? Papapasukin mo yan pag maaga. Maybe, sabi mo, tito, tito, dito muna kayo sa ano? Sa sala, sa sofa, relax lang muna kayo while I prepare, di ba? And to receive Christ means to welcome Him as an honored guest and make your heart His home. Di ba? You let Him reign over your life as you receive Him. Now, John also said, believe. The word believe can mean so many things. You can say, um, I believe tomorrow will be a sunny day. Pag sinabi mong, I believe tomorrow will be a sunny day, the context there is, uh, it's kind of a gut feel. Baka bukas, aaraw. Okay? But when you say, uh, I believe that Jose Rizal is the national hero of the Philippines. Ano naman ibig sabihin You're basically stating a historical fact. But when you say, I believe that Jesus is my Savior and my Lord, you're declaring your complete allegiance to Him. It's no longer a head knowledge. It's no longer an I know it, facts, and information. It's a declaration that Jesus is not just some strange, distant God in your life, but someone whom you say, Lord, be involved in every aspect of my life. Whether this is in the area of finances, love life, studies, marriage, parenting, anumang bahagi ng buhay natin, God's desire is that His Son, Jesus Christ, will be involved in our life. Why? Jesus, the Son of God, came to give us our true identity as children of God. My question is, are you a child of God? And as a child of God, are you letting Him lead you in every aspect of your life? Is your life completely surrendered to Him? Finally, the third absolute truth, Jesus, the Son of God, came to dwell among us. He came to dwell among us. Verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then in verse 16, for from Him or from His fullness, we have all as of the, uh, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. What do you mean by dwell? Okay. It means, from the original Greek word, it means to pitch a tent or a tabernacle. You see, many years back or thousands of years before Jesus came on earth, when, before he was born, uh, when the Israelites left, the, uh, left Egypt as slaves, and when they were in the desert, God directed Moses to come up with a tent. Okay, meron silang malaking tent, ang tinatawag nilang tabernacle. And they would build that every time they would stop over a particular location. And that tabernacle or that massive tent 
where they would offer sacrifices, where the priest would, on behalf of uh, the Israelite community, would offer sacrifices. That's where they would meet God and worship, and worship God. No? That served as a temporary worship area for the Israelites, a temporary house for God. Mababasa natin yan sa Old Testament, particularly in the book of uh, Exodus. Now imagine Jesus, God the Son, was worshipped by countless angels okay, in heaven. But then he did the unthinkable one day. After many profe- uh, prophecies pertaining to him coming to earth, he did the unthinkable. He stooped down to human level and took the form of a man more than 2,000 years ago, was born to a virgin, okay? And uh, he was born in a manger in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago. He took residence in a human flesh. And so this all-powerful, all-sufficient, all-wise God came to earth with one purpose. He reached down so that he can rescue each one of us. Remember, Romans 3, verse 9, we're all held under the power of sin. We have no capacity to change. That's why more than 2,000 years ago, Christmas, the very first Christmas story was born. Jesus came, 100% man and 100% God, because his whole point was to fulfill the prophecy and rescue us. From our sin. Jesus' birth became the fulfillment. Now, why did Jesus come again? Matthew 121. And this was an angel of God speaking to Joseph. To Joseph, sabi niya, she will bear a son, referring to Mary, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You know what? Jesus broke the barrier that separated us from God. Okay, have you ever experienced this before? Nagdadasal ka bago ka naging Kristiyano and feeling mo hindi umaa, hindi lumalagpas sa kisame. Yung Lord, tinasagot mo ba yung prayer ko? Nararamdaman niyo na ba yun? O ako lang ba yun? But you know what? When Jesus came on earth, His desire is to break that barrier so that we can be reconciled to God the Father again. By using the word tabernacle, John was actually making a connection in the Old Testament, through the coming of Jesus. And you know what? God made His dwelling with His people and it manifested in the presence of Jesus, who is also called Emmanuel. Now look at Matthew 1, verse 22 and 23. I'm about to close. Sabi niya rito, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord spoke, had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call His name, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Just as the tabernacle is the center of Israel's camp, so Jesus today is to be the center of of the church. And just as sacrifices in worship were offered at the tabernacle in the Old Testament, Jesus became the complete and final sacrifice. We don't need to sacrifice blood of bulls. Jesus became that final sacrifice that satisfied the righteous requirement of God. John 1.14, the Word became flesh, dwelt among us. We have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Two words. He's full of grace. He's full of truth. We desperately need God's grace in our life because we're finite, we're limited, we're imperfect, We're bound to sin again and again. We need His grace where He demonstrates the unlimited love and compassion right before us so that every time we come to Him, the desire of Christ is to restore us back in our relationship with Him and with God the Father. Romans 5 verse 8, God shows His love for us in this while we we're still sinners. Christ died for us. You know what, church? Jesus did not treat us as our sins deserve because everything 
every punishment that we're supposed to absorb as sinners, nilagay ni God the Father kay Jesus. And He became the final sacrifice. And because Jesus satisfied the righteous requirement of God the Father, kung tinanggap natin ang offer ni Jesus, the gift of salvation, we will be set free. And we will be made perfect because of Jesus. Not by our own work. It's only through Jesus. You know, as I end and as I close, and we're going to worship God, we're going to give Him glory. We're going to give Him honor and praise. Let me go back to Matthew 1.23. The angel said, the virgin, okay, shall conceive, bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. You know, as you celebrate Christmas, as you meet your family members, as we have reunions in the next few days, in the next few weeks, when we gather together in about three weeks' time for our Christmas Eve with our own family members, you know, church, I pray that we would always be remem- reminded God is with us through Jesus. The whole point why we celebrate Christmas, it's not Santa Claus. It's not Christmas gifts. It's not the answered prayers and the bonuses. We go back to the whole point of Christmas. It's Jesus Christ, period. Jesus, the Son of God, you know what? He came, okay, to bring light to us. He came to give us a new identity as children of God. And finally, the last point, He came to dwell among us. Let's all stand right now. We're going to worship God. You know, as we take time to worship, let's all bow our heads, let's all close our eyes, and let's meditate on God's goodness. Let's invite His presence today. Father, we come to You with a grateful heart, with a sense of awe, knowing that the one who brought us to where we are today is you, Jesus Christ. You didn't just come to earth to be born as a baby forever, but many years later, you will die on the cross so that each one of us can be given a new life life to the full Lord thank you for your work your finished work on the cross as we come into worship may your name be lifted up may you be lifted up in our lives wala na pong iba Panginoon Father I pray December 2022, as we celebrate Christmas, may we celebrate it like never before with a new meaning because you're at the center of it all. Thank you, Lord, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Emmanuel Amen.
Pastor Richard shared, I believe it's something that needs a response. Yung light, being a children of God, being a child of God, and Jesus being our tabernacle is something that will not have a power in your life if it's something that you just know. But it, pero hindi ka naman nag-respond. How many of you know God, Jesus being those three can either be the greatest threat in your life or it can be the greatest comfort in your life. Are you here? Like sometimes if you've done something wrong, if someone wants to shed light, if alam mo may nagawa kang mali, that's a threat to you. Tama ba? So nagtatago ka parang, I don't want to be found out. But you see, Jesus came to bridge the gap so that we would not run away anymore. And that we would not have an excuse anymore to say, Wala namang pake sa akin sa gade. No, God loves us so much despite of who we are. That's why He came. But again, it demands a response from each one of us. So as we bow down our heads right now, let's allow God to search our hearts. Are there areas that you know God wants to step in and bring light? Maybe today God is telling you, you don't have to live in darkness anymore. This is the day that you come out of that and you follow me. Maybe for some of you, you feel like God has abandoned you because of a certain thing has happened. I believe God is reminding you today, you are my child. I am your father. can come back home. Maybe some of us here, we are shaken by our circumstances or by the inflation, by the circumstances again in our life, but God is with us. Lord, right now, we lay it down to you. And Lord, we acknowledge that you are the true light that gives life to each one of us. Lord, it's not the gifts. Lord, it's not our hard work. It's not all the other external things. Lord, lahat yon. Lord, it can have a sense of light, pero it won't give us the true light, Lord, that we really need. It is you and only you, God, 
that will ultimately give clarity, give hope, give faith, God, give a complete life to each one of us right now. Why don't we all raise our hands right now? Lord, today we acknowledge you as the Lord and Savior of our lives, Lord. We pray, God, that you would continually open our eyes and that we would abide in you. And that as we stay with you, Lord, hindi lang ngayong Sunday, but darating bukas, Tuesday, Wednesday, and all the rest of the weeks and the months ahead of us, Lord, as we abide in you, Lord, may your light grow all the more. May, may it shine even more, God. And may we understand more and more what it means to be your children. Lord, thank you because truly in this life, hindi kami nag We are not abandoned. Lord, we are not alone. Lord, in fact, we are more than conquerors, just like you said in your word. And so, Lord, today, help us to continually stand in your truth no matter what. Lord, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we give God praise? You know, last but not the least, we want to give an invitation to some of you who has not yet received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Again, Jesus came here 2,000 years ago to bring us that relationship back to the Father. And so if that's you, you don't have a relationship with Jesus yet, I want to invite you right now. Can you quickly raise your hand? If you go, yon, taas mo yung kamay mo. Huwag ka mahiya sa, ka, sa katabi mo. If that's you, sabi mo lang, that's me. I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm going to count one, two, three. Yes, I see that hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? I see that hand. I see those hands. If you raised your hands, you know, I want to pray for you right now. And after this, I want to invite you to come here in front so that we can talk after the service, so that we can explain the decision that you're making. Why don't you pray with me? Jesus, Lord, you have ordained this day for me to hear of your word and to hear about the good news of what you've done 2,000 years on the cross. Jesus, I give you my life. Lord, I pray that today the old is gone and the new has come. And this will mark, Lord, a brand new journey in my life. Lord, I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we give a God? God, a round of applause for those who receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. How many of you are you are excited and ready to face another week? Ready na ba kayo? Mukha bang ready na yung katabi mo to face another week? Mga parties and everything. Before we leave, let's, let, let me pray for everybody. Lord, we go, Lord, by with your spirit and with your light. Lord, this light that you have in us is not just a light that would give clarity in our lives, but even as we talk to people, to our families, to our communities, to the campuses, Lord, we pray that this is the light that we're going to bring into each parties, into each conversations. And Lord, may other people also experience your love through our lives. Lord, we thank you. Send us with your power and send us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, and everyone say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. You are commissioned. Thank you.